Hi, I'm Chris Burns, Techie Gurus, and welcome back to the channel. And today, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna rant. Um, I'll be honest, I'm kind of sick of talking to prospects and they're like, oh, small businesses, we never get attacked. Nobody wants our money. Nobody's ever gonna do anything to us. Okay, that's cool, let's, let's talk stories, right? So uh, we know of a company in Kentucky, they make cabinets, and uh, last year they got a ransom. So Saturday night was rolling around, they were working overtime, and all of a sudden all the computers came up with a message on the screen. And it said, you basically, everything's encrypted, you need to pay us $400,000. So the people that were working call up the um, CFO who was overseed IT, they had, they had an external IT company, and said, okay, uh, yeah, this is a problem. So the CFO calls the IT company and they said, oh my God, yes, you're under attack. So IT company goes on site, they didn't have proper backup set up, all the, all, everything was encrypted. So what do you do next? What do you do? Well, luckily they had cyber liability insurance. So they made the phone call to the insurance company. Insurance company sent a forensics team out, did their investigation. They started the negotiation with the um, threat actors, which this was a well-known group. And they negotiated the payment down to $150,000. So they didn't cover all of it though. Because of terms inside their agreement, they only covered a portion of like what happened. So this brings me back to just like liability and negligence, right? So at the end of the day, you're liable for your network. If you're the owner or an executive, whoever is tasked with that, you're liable. So let's 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 go on to another story. So we picked up a prospect last year. Uh, they do tile. They do actually pretty good business for not very many people. Uh, they only have like 10 employees, and they almost wired half a million dollars to a vendor that sent them a request saying that they needed to change their wiring information. So what happened there? Well, the vendor itself was actually hacked. They had their email compromised, and they, cha they, they set up rules so nobody could see anything that was coming back in, the owner couldn't see it, and he sent wiring instructions out to every one of um, his customers. And the customer that we picked up was actually one of those customers. Now luckily in this case, he didn't wire the money right away, and for some reason or another, he got lucky, and the next day he had to make a phone call, and he called the owner, he's like, you know, why are you, why are you asking me to change the wiring information? And the, the owner of the vendor was like, what are you talking about? So, let's, let's fast forward to this year. So we're talking to a prospect, and they manufacture some things, and they sell on, online. So they use a common e-commerce platform online. And they came in on a Tuesday, or Monday actually, sorry. And they didn't notice it till Tuesday though. They came in on, on Tuesday and noticed that, uh, why are we missing some funds from some of these orders? Well, it turns out over the weekend, their email was compromised. They set up rules to, to automatically, um, from this e-commerce platform to redirect the email. And they went into their e-commerce platform, reset passwords, logged in, changed the bank account information. And they lost nearly $100,000. Now they don't have cyber liability insurance. So let's let's kind of break this one down. Who's liable here? Well, obviously they're liable because you know they have to they have to eat it. Um, they have no, no insurance to go back to. Um, we did help them out with a threat assessment. And let's let's tie this back into like what I've been talking about for the last few weeks is let's do diligence and do care, right? Due diligence, they should have an IT company. They don't have one. They should have a cybersecurity program. They don't have one. So they due care, they've never implemented any of this. So now, you are they negligent or are they grossly negligent? Because every day we see all these attacks, every day we see governments, we see big companies, but the problem is we don't see small companies being attacked because they don't have to report it. So the ones that stand up there and report that they've been breached, that they've been hacked, I applaud them because that takes courage something that a lot of companies don't have. They wanna hide behind this facade that, hey, I'm small, nobody's gonna hack me. Well, the truth of the matter is, somebody is going to hack you. You're gonna be breached. And most of the time, it's an employee error that causes it. It's an, it's an employee maybe leaving a password exposed to somebody that walks in the door. So it might not be a hacker, it might be somebody that they, they were like, oh, wow, there's a password. They log in, they can see some information, and they can maybe steal some money. Or it's that, that you're not protecting your email. You're not using multi-factor authentication. You're not using a, a, a cybersecurity company. You're not implementing these tools inside your business. 
So there's, there's how, how risk averse are you? What's your risk tolerance? Because we talked about this before, there's only four things you can do with risk. You can accept it, you can transfer it, you can mitigate, and you can avoid it. Well, it's hard to avoid all risk. That's nearly impossible. And accepting certain risks are just dumb. I mean, accepting risks that you're, that you're never gonna be hacked and thinking, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm never gonna put everything in. I'm just gonna avoid cybersecurity. I'm just gonna avoid that risk. That's not possible. Now you can transfer some risk. You can go out and get a cyber liability insurance policy and they'll do that. But guess what? If you don't implement everything that you check that box in there, there's a good chance that they're gonna deny your claim. So you may have spent $1,200, $2,000. In, in, in IT companies cases, there's, there's a good chance that our cyber liability insurance can be five, six, seven, eight, ten thousand dollars $10,000 because we're bigger targets than you. The average cyber liability insurance in the United States right now is someplace between twelve and $1,500 for a company. That's a small price to pay, but it also brings up a good point. You do have to implement everything they say. So when they say that you have to be using encryption, you have to be assessing, you have to be constantly scanning for threats. You have to be patching your systems. You have to be doing vulnerability scanning. You have to do that or else you're negligent. Or in your case, if you know that it's even more, it, like if you're, if, you, if you're consciously making that decision, you're grossly negligent and they're not gonna cover it. So let's all just get together. <laughs> let's understand that it's not a matter of if you're going to be hacked, it's when. When are you gonna be breached? And how bad is it gonna be? You can put things in place that mitigate that risk. It's never gonna be zero. No, and if anybody ever tells you that, they're lying. It's never going to be that low. There's always gonna be risk. So think about what your risk tolerance is. Think about how much you can lose. If somebody gets into your bank account and they take all your money, is your business there tomorrow? If somebody changes wiring instructions and you wire out $200,000 or $150,000 or even $20,000, are you going to be able to make payroll on Friday? Are you going to be able to pay your employees? Or are they going to walk out? I don't want to sugarcoat this. It's not about fear. It's not about instilling fear into people. It's just the reality is you have to take this into consideration. And if you don't, you're negligent. And if you consciously do it, you're grossly negligent. So on that note, <laughs> uh, we do cybersecurity. We help you implement a lot of things. We can do IT management. Um, it depends on how, how you're set up. If you have an IT company, cool. We can come in, we can do cybersecurity. That, we can strictly do that. I don't want to take over your IT if you're happy with that person. Because the person's doing a really good job of IT, great. If you're not sure how they're doing, if you just want to know, you're like, you know what, are they really doing what they're saying they're doing? Give us a call. We have we have, we have assessment process that we go through that we can assess what's happening. We can run scans, we can do things, and we can actually we can actually emulate what a hacking event would be like and see if the things that they've done for you are actually doing what they say they're doing. Because I'll tell you this, if I can exfiltrate data from your network and it's just from you running a simple executable, that's a problem. And that's something you need to take care of today. So again, I'm Chris Burns from Techie Gurus. Be safe. If you have any questions, post them down below. Uh, go to techiegurus.com. You can always give us a phone call. Uh, comment on any of our social media or anything like that. We're here to help. We want to help everybody. Our goal this year is to help 100 small businesses, in, at least in the Metro Detroit area, but we help companies anywhere. So if you're hearing this and you're not in Metro Detroit, that's fine. We can help you. So again, stay safe, and I'll talk to you again next time.